Hi guys, it's John from RFM Calc and today I'm talking about Shopify. So Shopify, as I'm sure you know, is one of the biggest e-commerce platforms in the world, used by a lot of people and uh, as you won't be surprised to know, integrates with RFM Calc, no problem. So today I'm going to talk about how to export orders as a CSV file from Shopify. We're then going to take a deep dive into that CSV file just to understand the structure. Uh, in terms of how Shopify exports orders, um, so the kind of order of the, the file, the column headings and so on. Uh, and then I'm going to take you through RFM Calc in terms of importing that file back in, which is really, really easy. Uh, so to start with, I've got my demo shop open here. And you can see this is your, your homepage uh, dashboard uh, with all the different links down the side to manage your orders, products, customers and so on. Um, so all we need to do to export our orders as a CSV is go to orders here. And then in the top right, you'll see there's a little export link. So if I click that, that gives me this little overlay with a few options. So I want to export all orders generally. You can just do a date range if you want to. And to import into RFM count, really you want to use a plain CSV file uh, is what we'd recommend. And then you just click export. So what Shopify will do now is do a little job in the background. And um, so it's doing that as a, so not a live sitting around waiting for the file. Um, it will generate that and then it will send you an email when the file is ready. The email looks uh, a little bit like this. So it just sends a simple email saying your orders are finished exporting and are ready to download. And then you can click that to get the file. Simple as that. And that's native to Shopify. This isn't an add-on. Um, every Shopify store has this export built in, which is great. So once you've got the file, it will look a little bit like this. So this is an example. Um, Shopify order export from a live store. As you can see, I've just um, obscured slightly the email and, and, and phone numbers and things when we get there just to uh, make sure no one's upset. Um, the first thing to notice is that uh, Shopify lists orders newest to oldest. So different e-commerce platforms do this in, in, in different ways. Sometimes uh, some platforms, uh, Magento, for example, will list, or, list, excuse me, list orders oldest to newest, uh, but Shopify lists them newest to oldest. So you can see in the first column here under name, uh, we've got the order ID. We then got the customer's email, the status of the order, if it's paid, when it was paid, uh, the fulfillment status, uh, when it was fulfilled, um, things, and then various other columns here. So you've got the breakdown of the order cost um, and then shipping method, the created app, which is when that line was created, um, the items on the order. And you can see you've got quite a few more um, extra fields here. So we've got the name and, and, and address of the, for the billing and also the name and address for the shipping. So even if they're the same, it will repopulate them in the shipping fields, even if they're the same as the billing. And then you've got phone as well, the payment method, payment reference, um, and a few other kind of random fields as well, tax values and so on that we don't really need to worry about. So I think the key things to note here is that Shopify works on a multi-line per order format. So if someone orders with Shopify, uh, let's take this example here, order 2645. So this call customers ordered multiple items on their order. So Shopify has added these as individual lines on the CSV, but it hasn't repeated this key data on each line. So if we scroll across, you can see they've ordered various different uh, perfumes here. Um, but it's still the same order, but it doesn't repeat the um, billing information. It doesn't repeat the delivery information. They, that only appears on the first order line. But what ties them together is that the order ID is the same on each line here. So RFM Calc can handle that no problem. What it will basically do is combine all that into, into one order uh, line before it imports it and, and, and generates your reports. Um, so one interesting thing to note here as well is that the created at line, um, date appears on every line. So if you're using this for analysis and you want to know the order date, this is probably the safest one to use. And um, so you'll see it will typically be the same all the way. So you could get some variation here, but typically that will be the same and it appears on every line. So if you're looking for a date field to use, and um, that's probably the safest one rather than uh, paid at, which only appears on the first line of the order. Um, and that's kind of it, really, in terms of analyzing the field. So there's, there's plenty of data in there. But I think the key things to remember are it's running newest to oldest and it's running with multiple lines per order if that customer has ordered multiple items. Um, but other than that, it's a fairly standard um, C order CSV. Um, nothing complicated and, and nothing RFM can't handle very, very easily. 
So next what I'm going to do is just return to our phone calc and I'm going to create a little test Shopify project um, on my demo account. Just to demonstrate the uh, different fields that are available here and the different settings you can have. So in terms of the default project currency, so RFM Calc supports all um, world currencies. Uh, this particular site I've exported from is in uh, GBP and UK pounds. Uh, for Shopify, the default uh, date interpretation is fine. So sometimes uh, different e-commerce platforms can uh, export dates in different formats, which can be difficult to interpret automatically. You can force that here for European or US, but the default, absolutely fine for Shopify. As we mentioned, um, in Shopify, orders are listed newest to oldest, but the auto detect is absolutely fine. Uh, and then in terms of the columns, we'll come back to that in a second, but basically that's all you need for now to set up the test project. So there we go, we've got our project now, and we can schedule our first report. So what I'm going to do is export, is uh, upload the uh, raw Shopify file, so not the uh, Excel version I just demonstrated with some fields blanked out, the original file. So that's uploaded now. So if you remember, if we refer back to the spreadsheet, the order ID column is name. Now for the order date column, you can use paid app. You could even use fulfilled app. But I think, as I mentioned, the safest one to use for Shopify is created at. So we'll select that here. Where has it gone? There it is. And um, we don't need a currency code column and all the orders are in GBP, so I'll ignore that. For the order value column, the best one really to use there is the total here. And that's the order total that only appears on that order total line. And that includes tax and shipping. Obviously, if you want to exclude tax and shipping um, from your RFM Calc report, you can use the subtotal. But I'm going to use total, which is there. Uh, the order status column, you don't have to specify. That's this um, financial status or fulfillment status column you can set here. What this allows you to do is if you wanted to, for example, exclude refunded orders, um, we can do that automatically without having to manually take them out of the CSV. So I'll select financial status as the order status column, and I will add refunded as a status to exclude. So you can exclude multiple statuses. You just need to comma separate them there. Now for customer ID, what we normally recommend um, for any e-commerce platform, unless you have an internal customer ID that every customer has, and you're sure that's going to be repeated, the safest one really to use is, is email um, as a customer identifier. And basically that will say, okay, the first time that email is used, that's a new customer. Anytime that customer comes back with the same email, that's then treated, email that's then treated as a repeat customer. Um, and then we've got a few other reports that we generate. So we'll add the customer email column and we'll add the billing phone as the phone column, which is over here. So you can see it's part of the billing address. We have a billing phone column. So we'll add that as well. If we just scroll down here and then the customer first name and last name columns. So here we just have one name uh, column. So some e-commerce platforms have a first name and surname column uh, separated. Uh, Shopify doesn't, it just combines them into one name. That's fine. All you need to do is set that column for the first name and ignore the last name column. If you forget that, then there's a bit of detail here on the help just explaining that as well. Uh, and then the customer company column. Uh, again, this isn't essential, but if you want to include that, you've got a ship, um, billing company and shipping company um, columns that you can use here as well. So what this does is uh, these are used in, in certain parts of the report and um, just to give you a bit more information and give you a list of top customers and so on. And um, if you want a, a sufficient account plan on our firm calc as well, we'll also export a full list of your customers with all this uh, data attached to them as well and their purchase data. So it's useful for generating that. Um, finally, um, on certain account plans, um, you can specify custom columns as well. So what this means is, um, RFM Calc will generate um, additional data and reports based on those custom columns. So one you might want to use is payment method. Um, so what this will then show you, if I specify payment method as a custom column, when the report is generated, 
what that will do is it will generate reports to show which payment method customers used and um, you know the lifetime value of a customer using shopify payments versus paypal and um, the average orders per customer you know how long a customer takes to reorder based on which payment method they're using and so on so custom columns can be really powerful and um, you can of course because it's a csv you can add your own custom columns into the csv before you upload it uh, but that's a nice easy one just to kind of demo the custom column functionality uh, and that's it and we'll just give the report a little name like so um, there is the option to anonymize customer data so if you don't want any real names and email addresses appearing on the report you can set this to yes uh, and then the only other thing i'm going to do is just overwrite the default column mappings so that means all these column mappings that i've specified for this shopify project next time i add a report they'll automatically be selected to save me having to go through those drop downs and set them again And that's it. So that's uh, now queued. That report will generate in a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll get an email notification when it does. Uh, and basically, that's uh, that's as simple as it is to export orders from Shopify and import them into RFM Calc. So really straightforward. Uh, I'll cover it in the next video. I'll go through all the different reports that are generated and all the data you get from that. But um, that's it. Obviously, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop us a line. Thank you.